turn because you're going to look like Jim Royal. <laughs> there he goes, he's off. That's Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> How long have you got? I'm going to tear out a cloud for us. Tyler, he's away. Let me stop. <laughs> is the vinyl burning you? You're sure? Yeah, I've got a skit. I know it is, it's life. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. Well, where are you heading? North Wales? Yeah, we're going to... Sunny Sands. No, but, yeah, Sunny Sands sunny in Barmouth it was, yeah. Barmouth, Barmouth Sunny Sands, Caravan Park. Uh, 76, 75. Something there, there or thereabouts. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. These, uh, we've got two uh, enthusiasts here. Yes, definitely. Bringing back the memories in the Cortina. It's like being in the TARDIS. That's what it's like, it is going like back in time. It's absolutely brilliant. You could just really just put the key in and you'd be off, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know where all the controls are. You'd be able to cope without power steering anymore, though. Yeah. Oh, I've got that on the next model. There's power steering on the next model. We'll bring that next year. Okay, straight in to 36 for the power steering test. We told you in 35 we'll be getting on with this. So power steering components just down here. The main body of the power steering is there. The valve body of it, it diverts the fluid through and it creates the power steering effect. We've got a, a little O-ring seal there. There's the coupling, we don't need that just yet. We've got the tensioner, the rack tension in spring and, and plastic bushing. That just keeps the... Uh, right amount of free play on the rack and pinion and the rest of the rack and pinion covers a couple of little seals which belong to the valve body a seal for the top of the shaft a circlip so that assembles that way into there seal on the end we've got an o-ring seal on this bearing at the bottom that all assembles into the the car we've got some allen key headed bolts which will go passivated we can assemble all that now and put it together get two bolts to bolt this cap on we'll put some grease in there too some um, good quality uh, grease that's suitable for the for the rack and pinion then i've had some hoses ex the hoses extended so it's going to reach across to the power steering pump on the engine assembly so just a, a union there to extend one of the pipes the other one a bit more complicated because there's no rubber hose that's the high pressure side so we went down the hydraulics firm and just got this uh, union made again to extend the hose and the banjo actually comes out that side so our original fittings there so that's done to extend it so that we can get there's our engine and there's our clip so we're gonna them pipes should be able to reach across we'll have these two units side by side prime it up and then we'll see if we can get that going so I'm gonna assemble all that back in to how it should go in there we'll put some more grease in before we do that then we're off Okay, leave that to me. I shall now assemble that up for you and then we'll get this tested and see if we've got some power steering, see if there's any leaks, anything like that. Let's go. Okay guys, we're on. We've got the pipes in there. I've got that assembled up and dipped up. We just use a long torx drive on a nice slender extension, just a very thin extension socket to get into these. You can see that the, them star drives there quite recessed. Your normal large socket won't fit, so you just use a little mini drive bar they're on and nipped up now we have to make a, an adaption here to extend the hoses so we just bought some from the local hydraulic guys some adapters to get down and round so that the clip won't be too near to the engine so hoping that those adapters don't leak they shouldn't do I've nipped everything up put that back together bit of grease in it I've left the cap off the end we don't need that to pressure test this we're going to put that back together later first thing to do is to get the power steering fluid in here and then boot it up so I'm going to pour in now we're going to see what happens we're going to pour in off we go anything could happen now guys we could get leaks anywhere we've no idea this banjo here that they supplied me with slightly thicker banjo so this bolt only really just draws it in to the base the high pressure output side of the pump so it could quite possibly leak there 
it just depends on which pressure these things generate so I'm going to go to the front of the engine boot up then bring you back round we've got uh, the light shining against us so just going to film from the back off I go to start up now let's see what happens I saw the pipes pressure up. I can hear a strange whistling noise. The steering seems tight. Okay, our initial pressure up doesn't show any leaks. Uh, just got a cloth down here to try and spot anything, but it's uh, there's nothing on it. So those are all tight, and we're okay there. Uh, what I noticed, there is air in it. I've just had it under pressure and there's like stiff sections I'm going to presume that that you can hear the pressure coming out it must stay pressurized I'm going to presume we've got air locks in this and you've got to bleed them out but nothing on the body's gone uh, where we've bolted it all back together and these top seals and stuff like that are all intact so it's holding out I do notice it uh, puts a loading on the engine you can hear the engine revs drop down when I start to turn this so it's not as easy to turn as what I would have thought I would have thought I'd be able to do it like this but it might require the leverage of your steering wheel and it might feel without any road wheels on the same amount of strength needed for a car without it but when you put the road wheels on I suppose then you're going to notice because that's when the real forces apply uh, to the steering rack. So we've all had, we've all had our car on the jacks and turned the wheel. And it's been dead easy. So we'll see how it works. But at the moment, there's no leaks. So we're going to do another test in a second. I'm just going to put the cover on the top of the rack now because it's time to give it a bit of a harder test and some higher revs. So cover on that requires this bracket here two shim spacers to get that those shim spacers are to do with getting the impact on this correct the the load this up with a certain amount of force using these shims I don't quite know how they measure that also there's a there's a rubber gasket here but I don't think it's off it uh, that could have just been here by accident it was in the jar so we're gonna have a look but we're gonna put this back together and I've got two bolts to go through our nice galvanized plate so we're going to do that it doesn't look like it had a locking tab I would have thought that these two uh, bolts on here would have a locking uh, washer that stops them from undoing I'm going to go and check on other cover seeners just to make sure if it is don't worry we'll be fitting that let's get these on there's our kit to go and do it a 13 head bolt with a 13 head on it here we go there's the other one Okay, so no leaks, and I think I've sussed out the power steering. I think certainly if you put a, a load on here, I've just got my friend to 
try and fight against the wheel turning and I was still able to use one hand on this and turn so it does actually work it's just that it doesn't work as I thought it would maybe that's because we've not got the leverage of the wheel and I'm just trying to use my hand here but certainly no leaks and uh, all running okay so I think there was some airlocks in it but I'm happy with that it's certainly in the zone it's not like uh, something we've really got to be uh, working on for, for weeks and weeks it's something that just can be just tweaked in there if it has to be but uh, no leaks all pipes intact so uh, we are, we're pretty confident about the power steering and it also enables me to run the engine for longer periods of time and not cooking up my uh, power steering pump so it's given us a longer engine run time as well today we've been running for 20 minutes temperature gauge just stayed bang in the middle oil and bolts and everything else is fine so that's the, uh, the 20 minute test continuous 20 minute test done we'll be doing an hour, hour test soon and um, occasional test cold starts to hot and uh, cycling it round and round and monitoring things but on the whole there's not much that's going to stop me putting this in the car and feeling really confident about it going in the car ok so just pop the engine back into a storage bay there all tests are going good uh, just uh, finished off that power steering so we've got the power steering fixed up and working right it just needed a slight adjustment inside there was um, a little pin that wasn't right so I set that and now I've got good uh, control we'll, we'll run that up later on and just show you that running the power steering going nice but I'm going to take you back to another job hold on we're going to go back into the unit in we go it soon gets uh, cluttered I'm afraid I've been searching through for bits uh, why we've been searching through for bits is that we've been rebuilding the brake servo parts here you'll have a brake servo with we've, we've had this back from the the rebuilders and it comes back in a primer so you have to finish off your color so we've gone for satin black in two pack paint and that's been on for a week now it's nicely cured so servos there are nicely uh, refurbed and rebuilt new valve on top there so it's nice and clean and white as it should be and what I've done as well I've copied off an original new old stock but rusty servo the correct stenciling for the girling part codes for the mark 3 brake setup so you'll see those stenciled on the front and also there's another marking just at the side there to get it exactly right so that's a nice good hard two pack finish on the brake servo we're expecting that to weather nicely and there's the other girling code at the back so we pop that there now we've got the bracket that holds it up a new gasket's gone on the front that was already powder coated so a bracket there so we're on with brake servo bits there's our new old stock one just in this box where we copied the code off you see the code just at the front coming up onto the bench then we've got the automatic brake pedal and we've got those switches uh, this one's the cruise control vacuum kill switch which was fitted later on to this powder coated brake box pedal box housing again powder coated and there's our automatic pedal which has a modified tab to accommodate the um, switches at the side the kill switch for the vac and then normal brake switch so a slightly extended tab to fit we've got to put this back together now we've got the assembly parts we're on the page of the book the Ford book here hold on two secs volume down touch for you okay assembly a diagram for that so we know where all the springs washers and clips go so we'll now build that back up a little bit of a clean up a bit of grease on there we get locking pliers to get this uh, clip off at the back then we'll assemble the bar and the pedal and we'll make the complete assembly we've got our uh, brake pedal as well rubber and the uh, chrome surround for it which is a hard item uh, so we need to do that also the accelerator pedal will do that as well so you'll have an accelerator pedal assembly built and the brake pedal and servo all set up the actual master cylinder itself is away for refurb you saw on earlier videos that we uh, had them galvanized and some of the galve leaked the fluid inside the uh, 
galvanising fluid was still inside the servo, uh, mast cylinder, and it uh, re-corroded itself. So we had that redone, and it's been sent away for re-sleeving, just waiting for them to send it back. So then when they do that, the whole thing can come together. The reservoir tank, the actual plastic white tank, I found one that's as white as I can get. They normally yellow out, so I've been cleaning that up. So the name of the game is to build this sub-assembly, all fitted, all done, and then shrink wrap, bubble wrap, put it in a box, and that's ready to go into the car. So that's one less job off the list. We'll then move on to another task. I've got word from the trimmers that the seats are done, so we're going to pop down there and have a look at the seats. I'm waiting any minute now for a call from the body shop, and um, we're going to see what they've been up to. I might be talking a little bit funny, that's because a wisdom tooth has been pulled out right at the back there, there was wisdom teeth, uh, not a pleasant operation, but uh, so I've got a swollen gum on this narration, wisdom tooth out, uh, there was actually no problem with it, but uh, dental recommended removing, it was next to another tooth, uh, nothing worse than dental stuff, let's think about car stuff, we don't want to think about that, We're es we escape here in this workshop, it's what we do, away from the real world we pretend it doesn't exist just rock music and cortina parts that's what we like okay we're going to begin assembly of brake pedal box assembly okay we've got all the bits together there uh, our pedals on there's our pedal trim pedal rubber pedal itself i'm just going to spin this for you so you can see what we've done the bar that goes through the pedal there got all the washers and springs and circlips on it <clears throat> if you need to uh, you if you're using the video for reference if you just took one apart you can't remember how it went together I'll just scan in on the uh, diagram in the book for you but you got that bar goes through on this is on the uh, automatic anyway and you've got a, a nylon spacer There's an insert there another insert another nylon spacer then a locking circlip and then you've got a little washer just on the inside, I think, and then that's it. You're good to go. It's all in. There's a little um, adjuster there. We don't need that. That's for when you've got a clutch pedal. This box must just have it on. I've got the back of the brake servo connected. It's about to fall off. Watch it. It's not bolted on. We need to find some nice galvanised bolts that we had done for that. So the pedal there operates. Spring on. The turn spring there so you just push down and that's it that pedal box is coming together nicely a few little things to go on a couple of nuts and bolts for the mounting kit so we'll just screw them to it loose talked about the servo so i'm carrying on with foot pedal jobs this is my accelerator cable uh say cable not the cable accelerator pedal shaft replated um, these were normally in zinc I went for chrome on this just to give the car a little bit of extra finesse that come out nice there's the pedal so I've got to clip that to that pedal trim on so the spring a couple of circlips retaining it into this housing there's the housing you'll see my cruise control bracket there that's added on to the unit if you've uh, just joined the films you look back through the films you'll see that we've made cruise control and that's the control cable bracket for it and at the end of the uh, accelerator rod you've got the tab which pulls the lever pulls the accelerator pedal for the cruise control so that's added on a little metal tab there added on other than that that would be a standard shaft so we're just going to assemble that together we've dug out the servo activating rod or the brake pedal activating rod we'll need that clip into the kit to my left we've got the washer pump metal casing i had that replated they're normally finishing a dull zinc again i went for chrome just to give the car as i said the extra little touches so these are some minor mods which we're doing on the car just to uh, give it a bit more of a luxurious feel so that should look nice when it's located down in the footwell. Okay, just to give it a little bit of extra touch. I noticed these things on Swampy, some of the high vis items that I like to do. So just to give the car a little bit of extra look. It's probably what they would have done if they were luxury cars. You'd have had 
little things like this chrome plated so I enjoy doing those kind of subtle modifications if I was building the car totally standard as I will be doing with Bramble um, these will be going back to just the zinc finish but this car has got some slight luxury touches on it on Ruby so uh, we hope they're not too much I think you'll find they're nice and subtle okay so I'm going to clip this together I'm going to get this uh, accelerator rod all fitted into its housing here we'll dig out the gold passivated nuts and bolts to mount it and screw them loosely on so that when we come to build the car we're not looking for stuff light little bit of grease just multi-purpose on the uh, rod everything as smooth as we can we've got a nice accelerator cable for it and that's been uh, greased up well I say greased up three in one oil so the accelerator cable is really smooth we'll show you that later on in the film just gives you a nice smooth accelerator action so you don't get a stiff accelerator pedal so carrying on with that then let's carry on and build that get that pedal attached to there okay there is our accelerator pedal built up just showing you at the back how that fits in you just got to slot this uh, return spring on and then push the uh, rod into the plastic and at an angle then open up the jaws of the plastic as you bring it round it'll clip into place not too bad that so looking nice there for a nice accelerator pedal bracket assembly all in those little rubber nylon, uh, nylon inserts there they just push and, and lock in they twist and turn so you put the pedal in first before these go on then bring them in twist them on it's quite easy to two circlips holding it in there lightly greased so we're nice surprisingly little travel on it you'd think uh, it'd have more travel but that's all the travel you get it amplifies it of course when uh, the cable goes on there it's, it amplifies the leverage but um, that's nicely done we're happy with that real happy with that nice accelerator pedal done I'll just take you across now to the foot wash pump and then we'll show you the rest of the servo being assembled I'm gonna find some galvanized bolts now and washers screw on the back guys I'm just on with the foot pump rebuild just got myself a a spare pump I had for reference so I could uh, rebuild this one here's our chromed parts put back together now the bulb on this one was cracked you'll see those cracks there and they all do it if you've got one that still works you're lucky because they all break up there and water comes out basically the rubber just perishes on these foot pumps on Ruby it's an electric wash wipe automatic system so Whilst I'm still going to have this pedal, it won't function as an actual uh, bulb pump, but we want it to look original. So, we've put the bulb out of this one into our re-chromed body. The fixed with a rivet here, bar rivet there, you've got to drill that to get it out, and then you make yourself a new pin to go through. In this case, I used a brake uh, pad pin off the M16 calipers cut down the hole through it and split pin in the end and you, you're good to go there okay so we've got that um, it's uh, a galvanized uh, return spring as well I had that galvanized so the detailing is on it you can see how clean that unit is and that's running nicely for your foot operated pump um, what, do, what was I going to say well it's got to get the switch out of this one now I have got a switch knocking around somewhere but just to save time I'm going to pinch the switch out of this one there's plenty of those switches around so two screws for the actual switch that controls the uh, wiper motor in case you're wondering if you're not up to your Cortinas and you're used to wash wipe early Cortinas Mark Freeze had even facelift ones some of them anyway had this as a way of uh, squirting the water on your windows this one looks like it's still working this one might be intact we never know that might be a survivor so we'll keep our eyes on that one certainly be keeping certainly be keeping that uh, as clear a space here anyway there's a switch there that controls the wipe the wiper movement and parks them again 
other than that that's all it does so that switch we need for our assembly here i will have that switch out of this original assembly somewhere in the one of the boxes but just because i'm on the bench now we're going to do this so once that switch is across this is done and uh, we can put that with the rest of the kit that we've been doing today foot controls associated controls today so brake pedal servo accelerator and then this foot pump that concludes that little area so switch in now for this foot pump okay so there it is nicely done i think you'll agree we got ourselves another top class piece of kit little uh, little twirl there for the catwalk Ooh yeah look at that peach what a peach mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. okay nice action just what you wanted okay so we as you can see we like the details we do like the finer details we like to make a nice job of things non-standard of course it is you know we like to mess with the rules i think you can mess with the rules if you play it right it's what you don't put in that counts what you don't put in so just don't go too far and you'll be okay down at cortina city we're building up the parts where's that accelerator cable gone there it is that goes alongside that see we're, we're making up we're making up a little we're making up a little place where everything fits so it looks like it's in the car we've even got some carpet there Ooh. There we are, that's the idea, you can see what we're up to. We keep going, there's a few nuts and bolts to find, some servo bits, and we've got uh, some servo bolts to get, and then we just got to wait for that uh, master cylinder to come back, and that'll complete this operation. I'll then put these in a separate box associated with that area of the car. Alright, so on to another task we go. Just going through the nuts and bolts advantage of sorting through all your nuts and bolts first it's quick to find them so what the set of four bolts and anti-spin washers so we got them there there for the brake servo into the bulkhead so we'll just clean the paint off these spreads now sorry about the uh, the uh, speech that i've got because my gum swollen because a wisdom tooth got pulled a couple of days ago it hurts so we'll just clean the paint off and we'll bring them on with I can't say F's, I can't say F's, let's try it, I'll bring those on with a 13mm spanner, if I don't try it ends up sounding like this, 13, all goes wrong, okay, F's aren't working for me, until uh, my gums swell down a little bit, spanner, let's go, just fitting this boot gaiter, uh, some silicon food for the rubber, keep it supple, makes it last longer keeps it supple makes you last longer it doesn't sound right rigid and lasting longer would be more appropriate for those minds that are wandering as we work our way through episode 36 hope you uh, you've had a tea break halfway through the film don't worry about pausing get yourself uh, and Eccles Cake was sponsored by Eccles Cake, not officially. Get yourself a tea, uh, have a little break. Don't forget, if you've not seen all the films, we go right back to episode one on this series, of course. So catch up if you want when you get a chance. Let's give that a bit of a, a stroke now. And uh, there's your shaft that operates the. Uh, the pedal there that's going to go inside let's just flip this up and show you where you put your shaft that goes just in that hole there okay so that's ready now we've got those bolts we've worked these studs here we like working studs and uh, we've worked them with these nuts so you're not on your stud there We've greased that shaft with the silicon lube, so we're all nice. Uh, I know uh, Jim was interested in uh, in how that would work. It's ribbed. You can see those ribs there. I don't know if it actually collapses up and down or not, but it's the way they've done it. So 
Just pop that uh, rubber on there like that over the shaft. Tighten up your nuts and you put it in that hole just there and then uh, that's that servo assembled very nicely. So let me get my hands on that now and uh, bolt it all together. It's going to be quite exciting. Okay, just got the fork, another F word there, just got the fork of the servo through, another F, and uh, there's two little plastic bushes which go on either side of the, the brake pedal there, and then you've got this centre pin and the clevis there for it, and in we go, so we'll just lightly grease that up and the pin through, and we're off, and we're in, so clevis on, and then that's nicely all new old stocked up, or fully referred in we go might just have to push a little bit more on there we go not quite through and then in with that one hard to do with one hand but you can see what happens that goes in so that's the brake server rod the only thing we're missing is the the donut off here I obviously have to take this off again to slot it on because the donut missing which is uh, a buffer donut but this comes apart when it goes into the car and I can't find that buffer donut it's like a little insulating foam pad which just slots on the end of here and uh, I've put it away somewhere I can't find it that's the only part that's missing off this so that's assembled there we're now waiting for the master cylinder that'll come in soon so we'll put all the parts alongside each other and we'll step back and have a look see what we've been doing today okay Give it up for the lovely Terry. Mmm. Our usual 55 numbers. There we go. We like that little bit in the video, don't we? There we goes. Okay, with the brake master cylinder set up, just put to one side and boxed up for now, we move on to some other little niggly jobs. We're on locks today. We've got a choice of keys to use. We've got to build a locking suite because there's no locks for Ruby. Uh, we have ourselves a various amount of different locks, there's a boot lock there, ignition lock there, we've got some new door handles, uh, they're escort ones, so you've got the vertical uh, position key, the Cortina's at uh, 3 and 9 o'clock, Escort and Granada I think are at uh, 12 and 6, but it, because they're hard to get, I'm going to just go for the, uh, the 12 and 6 position one, these are good brand new handles. And it comes with a little kit there, just to uh, a return spring to make it a nice positive action. So we've got to find a tumbler to fit in that. Then we've got to key the tumble, lock tumbler up to fit which keys we choose. I do believe these nice Ford keys here are slightly later keys. I think they're for the uh, 72 car. Certainly for, at least for facelift. And they might have been pre-facelift um, series 2 pre-facelift but in the workshop manual this 71 workshop manual it's showing us two keys a valet key and the master key they're the metal keys although it's got a plastic surround on it it is a metal key Ford stamped on the key there now we found in our select sections of spurs and things we've accumulated what looks like a set of original keys with a ID tag on it and it looks like we've got ourselves here the valet key, the curved one, look. And the master key. So that's the proper set of keys to use. These look better. They seem to be more sought after. But these are the right ones for that car. Um, whether we could find a plastic adapter is uh, another matter. We may be able to find one and make these look right. But they're rusty, we might be able to clean them up, we don't know how bad that rust has got. So we've got ourselves a rusty set of keys there, a mint set of keys. So I've got to make a decision on which to use. It's a hard choice to do. Go original or go nice, new and re-key to that. This key's already works for the ignition, so we wouldn't have to take the ignition apart. It's a reasonable job taking it apart. I mean, I'd like to take it apart to grease all the system in it. But it does feel all right. I think there's a little pin in there that we've got to knock out. I have taken one of these apart before, but I can't quite remember how I did it. I can either refer back to swampy videos or just try and work it out. 
so we've got to decide what key we're going to use there's the boot lock that shouldn't be too bad to take to bits there's a roll pin in it there which i think has got to come out but we've got to build a set of locks all together we've got one two three four five if you include the glove box okay we need to go and find a glove box latch now because i'd like that to work as well so i'm going to go into stores find a glove box latch bring it down and let's have a look at what we got for locks also we're going to start building the headlights up we've got some headlight backing plates which are in good order some have been powder coated some were bought that way we just need to find a set of good halogen four set of halogen uh, bowls and i'll take you through swapping them bowls across to new backing place uh, backing lamps and making the same as what we did on swamp because the system is very effective and very bright they're actually ridiculously bright on swampy and they've lasted uh, we're up to 25,000 odd miles on swampy with various driving and um, them lights are still going like troopers so I want to replicate that so lights and locks bit of alliteration there lights and locks that's today's job so we're just going through these little jobs which would drain time once the shells back I have been to look at the seats and looking all right I didn't film it I'll be going back soon okay let's get on locks and lights in part 36 carrying on through the video guys we're talking locks 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 and I want to talk you through what I've been doing the last hour for you just a few seconds ago of course but the video just jumps an hour ahead now stripping down old locks whatever I can find look at this pitted uh, mazak here it's what happens with these handles on the Cortina you get this pit they're not uh, chrome as such it's what they call mazak I think there possibly is a company that recoats these now but certainly hasn't been in the past um, not sure but uh, rather than trying to get it replaced we've, uh, we've sourced Grenada Escort ones as I said they operate the lock in a vertical position that's the downside but other than that you get a nice door handle what we need to do is get that set of keys cut so we've stripped a lock down the biggest challenge with stripping the lock down is getting your roll pins out this is a roll pin it inserts and holds the whole lock together through one of the actuating uh, bars the roll roll pin goes through and you've got to knock it out it's in a little hole just at the top middle of your screen there i didn't have a roll pin removal tool which is just a bit of toughened steel bar so i managed to make work a cut down allen key you could possibly do the same a drill bit may also work the shank of a drill bit I use this small allen key here two sizes for do two different lock types the boot lock um, doesn't require one it requires you pulling the pin on that which you can get with side cutters by rotating it you can get the boot lock apart talk about the boot lock in a minute but this uh, hex key allen we use to strip the lock down I've got the lock into bits you'll see various locking components here we'll talk about those when we reassemble but I'm going to take you across to the bench and show you how the lock works on a door handle door handle lock first we have done the glove box lock as well that's finished we'll talk you through that later you have a locking glove box locking door handle locking your boot and lock on the ignition barrel let's go across to the bench and i'll show you a lock strip down okay those those two keys i was telling you about your master key and your workshop key here's our ignition barrel over here now we haven't taken this ignition barrel apart this is an early one and on above it's a slightly later one there's where you drill through to take uh, you have to drill through that to extract the barrel I haven't done that was done on Swampy this is the lock that I've got for, for Ruby it doesn't need uh, the tumbler changing because this key was for this lock it came as a set so that fits so that key is going and operating this all I've done is clean and lubricated the lock I've lubricated the lock with this uh, surprisingly enough lock, lock lubricant which is pressurized nozzle into the end work it till it becomes a lot more free this is nice and smooth now so that locks done but what I want to do is have all the door handles on the same key and that requires the strip down of the driver's handle there's our new old stock escort granada handle which will be going on and here is a variety of tumblers this is the tumbler out of the boot lock slightly different design that's stripped down and ready to be 
keyed to this key okay here's a one that we've done we've keyed this you'll see that this lock fits in the front of the handle what you have with these locks there's one that's just popped out it's a series of wafers what you call wafers hold on a second I'm just going to turn the radio down two seconds okay yeah lock wafers these are all different size um, you'll see an oblong cutout in the wafer there and to get different key combinations what how they did it was the length of that oblong there varies depending on your key so your key actually s inserts through these in the lock I'm going to hook one up to show you visually on the end of the key if I can do it I will be able to do it so the keys going into the lock and these are arranged in a sequence a series of six of those you'll see them inserted into the lock here and all that happens is the ridges on the key pull these down and what happens when the keys in that all fully compress so the barrel can rotate if they're the right shape so you have to match different shapes of say different shapes different sizes of oblong cut out to the key that you've got you do that by stripping a few down I had a few scrap locks so I stripped down my scrap locks and built myself up a set of different wafers of which I was able to pick various sizes to match the profile of that key then you just clip them into the body of the lock there's some springs in there that you've got to be wary of a good tool to use when you're doing stuff like this is a pick Here's a, a pick which we've got, a draper pick. I've actually got a set of these. Great tools for just hooking them out because you can get in and just hook them out. And they're great for just little jobs. Um, I've been using some thinners here to clean the locks off, all the dried grease on the locks. And it's great for uh, fishing them out when you put them in the thinners. Look at that pick. Into there we go. So we'd wash that barrel, that tumbler down and then you can go in with your pick and unhook it back out swill it around and get it looking clean before you do your final clean of it and your final grease up and then when I want it out I just hook in and it comes out that easy with the pick see just like this so we've been washing down the locks and then building them back up to match the profile by inserting the wafers in you just have to work out that oblong varying lengths fit the different profiles once you get it right you can assemble the lock and when you put the key in all these wafers are pulled away in flush with the uh, barrel tumbler and then the lock is able to rotate in here if one's out you won't be able to spin your lock so that's how it works so that's what we've been doing we've got a couple more to build up i'm short of some wafer sizes so i'm going to go back to stores and strip a few old locks down and gain, gain yourself a few more and uh, then we're able to uh, complete it this lock is done although after just push that back in it popped out when I was showing you that's done and that can go back into that handle and we've got ourselves a completed handle you then reassemble it there's a few various little slots and clips and springs which go on to make it all work we'd clean this and, and grease that up so that it's running nice so that would give us it that once that's done we'd switch to the boot lock which is made very similar comes apart slightly differently the boot lock but it is pretty much self-explanatory when you're looking at it how it all comes apart unscrews and there's a roll, a roll pin which you've got to pull out on the boot lock but uh, technically it's pretty easy I must admit so if you want to fix all your locks at home if your locks are sticking or if your locks aren't matching you can do this job relatively easily with some good tools but just get yourself a pick get yourself some lock lube some thinners to wash everything down a nice clean area to work on watch out for the little tiny springs which can pop out so get yourself something white so if anything pops out it's going to show up that's the kind of thing we've been we've been doing um, the glove box lock I'll take you across we walk across to that glove box lock it's nice to just do the whole lot you may as well when you're doing it do your glove box lock if you've got one GTs and base models I don't think had certainly XL and GXL have this lock you push the key in turn the whole thing and then you can't open your glove box basically not much to it that has a roll pin there you can just see it and again in the middle of your screen the smaller hex key allen key which I chopped down here it comes is used for that one and it, pop, it knocks it out 
and then you can take this lock apart there's a little spring again pretty self-explanatory how this works there's not a lot to it but you gently take this apart that rubber gripping uh, knob whatever you want to call it pops off you can just push it and it pops off you can get to the whole lock there's uh, only I think there's three or four wafers in this it's a shorter barrel and it's easier to do but it's the same principle which I just said where you swap the wafers out till the profile fits uh, for your key and then once you're done you tap the roll pin back in and then you've got yourself a nice locking glove box here's the uh, assembly of the boot lock slightly differently built to the way it bolts together you've got a little snail uh, cam there and the, the actuate the locating rod which fits in the boot aperture but that comes apart quite easily there's the small roll pin which it has just pushed in you can grab that with uh, I use side cutters on this by gripping it at the end like this and then rotating slowly and it withdrew out because you can't actually knock these out you've got to pull them out so you be careful I use side cutters because they grip in be careful you don't snip it off this got to judge the force but I'll show you it going back together so it'll be a bit easier but the little roll roll pin just slotted in that that cut out there <coughs> cute excuse me voice so that's what we've been up to and then we'll move on to the lights but I'm gonna start reassembling one complete lock now and we can see how it goes together let's do that right we've got Rick on camera he's gonna hold camera while I film uh, back on the headlights we need that glass it's on a bad ball we want the glass I'll show you why we want the glass in a minute but first I'm going to dissect it so we don't want to damage the halogen because we want that so I'm going to take this to bits using our faithful crocky crocky's the one air defenders are Crockies on, ear defenders on, uh, guns for show, knives for pros, let's go, <laughs> guns for show, knives for pros. I think we milked the edge of that belt there. This one's a little bit trickier than the last one I did. No, 
normally just pop straight off. Pretty well glued on this one. I might have to go a bit more. That one's going to go. Here's one that's almost identical. We can do the old trick with what we did earlier. So I'll just get that. It's just a bit more to go on it, but which is what happens when you do it right. Oh, yeah. Opens up like a, an oyster. And your pearls are on the top. So that's what we're heading for. This bowl, which is now will detach. That's probably why that one's not going. This little bit's still glued on, but you can get it by just breaking the rubber there. There's the gasket, and then there's the ring. So that gives us this, and then we've already stripped somewhere uh, a light on one of these ring lamps uh, in the box. We've got one of these, which was break the glass off one of these. These are really good lamps. But the flat, so they're no good for the car because they don't look right. They're flat, and you're going to be at a car show, and you're going to say, What's that funny thing in front of your car? Well, it should be this. So, we're breaking out this glass here. Can't grind it, so you've got to break the glass out. We'll show you how to do that later. And then that fits on top, top of silicon, and you've got yourself your light. So, we're going to carry on with that. Thanks for filming. Okay, we thank Rick for being on the camera there for us. So four halogen, old scrap halogen lamps stripped down. And now we've just been to the sink to give these a clean. And you'll find that what we've got here, we've got, uh, this is the high beam lens. Okay, so it's a halogen stamped up lens in the glass, you can see it there. The Lucas lens, okay. And on E11 stamping there, as, as what the sticker is on your slam panel, that's to do with the uh, the rating of the lamps or the, the standard for the country. I think it's a European thing. I'll mention that. Eh? So, here's our dip one, which is a seven. What's that? Seven. Seven three twenty, I think. I'm trying to look at that number for you guys. I always thought these were 7412s, that's giving me a 7320, I think. I always thought those were 7412s, that's just sick. Uh, 7320. So there's a pair there. I don't think they're handed. We've just got two lots. So there's your other high beam one. So we have a set of four um, lamps, lenses, and we now. We've got one of the, these are brand new lamps that you buy off eBay, the Ring Automotive ones. This one's had the glass taken off it, just leaving that recess ready to, so we can silicon in the the new lens. So it just goes in like this on a bed of silicon. Silicon's fine. It can take the uh, temperature, no problem. They use it to seal exhaust up. So you put a bead of white silicon around there and set that in it. That gives you an original looking but nice, powerful, clean lens. The reason we change the backs is simply because the lenses are normally gone and pitted. This one's about to rot through. And it's just no good. They just don't look the part. You just don't get the reflectivity. Um, these lenses, these bolts here weren't too bad. Some are really bad. Some are completely gone. And that one's all crazed and gone. See, you wouldn't, you'd lose a lot of your efficiency of your lamp if you kept on using these. It's, it's a massive difference, believe me there is, because I've, I've done it on Swampy. Swampy's running this system, and uh, my lights, are, as you've probably seen on some of the videos, they're that powerful. You can see them on motorway signs in the daytime. And um, they're as good as uh, the modern cars that I've driven. You wouldn't think you could get that out of a classic car. You always envisage sort of dim lights, but no, they're really powerful. And especially when you do the quad conversion, so all four give you high beam. Obviously, uh, you can only have two on dip beam. You mustn't have four on dip beam. So uh, just two on dip beam. But these ring automotives will go, will go uh, high beam on all four units. 
So we have to set that up right. I'll show you what I mean later on. Whilst I was breaking for the lock job, I switched back onto lamps. So it's lamps and locks, as we said. Going to give these a, a towel down now. And I've got to be wary now that there's a lot of dust been created by the uh, the grinding process. And I don't want to contaminate. This is a clean operation here. When we're gluing these up, we want it to be really clean. Yes, stuff can still get in from the back, but we want to make sure this is a clean job. So we've got to move away and back out this area and get rid of all this. But we're only going to do that once we've broken the, the glass off all the other units. And then we'll have a collect clear up and then we'll sterilise the area. And we'll build four nice, four nice units. We also do a nice little trick here where the original Lucas lamps in the Cortina has this plastic cup at the back which rotates pushes and locks on you twist it twist twist locks on uh, the ring units don't have that that's what you get at the back of the ring like a rubber donut fits on the back but it looks better we're going to have stickers made as well these are the stickers that go on so we'll be placing those stickers onto the lamps like this we'll get these remade in high temp by the way because that gets hot so you can't you've got to tell a sticker company to get your high temp label so there's that to do but what we cut out the middle of the old backing plate you pull them off that one hasn't got one uh, i think i've nicked all plenty of multitasking going on we're just flipping between uh locks and lights again so we've got a completed lock here it's all built up and uh, it's all, all ready to go so that's got the tumbler keyed in we've done the boot lock as well the boot lock's just got a little pin on it there uh, hold on a sec let's turn down the radio the boot lock's got a little pin just in there you pull that pin out just grip that pin i use side cutters just to grip it look just get in there like that and then gently watch it because you can collapse the roll pin so just gently rocked it and then unbolt this end here there's a nut there and that shaft unbolts as well then you can take out your uh, tumbler then it's just a case of keying it as I just showed earlier on with your right uh, wafers so that one's ready to go we're going to put you on the tripod in a minute and just talk you through everything the Granada Mark II handles if you can't get Cortina ones and you end up with a Mark II or the Escort ones bear in mind the lock finishes at the 12 and 6 there so it won't be as original and also when you do that you've got to make sure that it comes with this um this housing here the, the rod actuator because the pin for that is in a different place to compensate for the fact that it's at 12 o'clock these cortina ones i'm just bringing into your screen now the pins in a different position so if i was to reassemble this and knock the roll roll pin back through there this rests in a different place you can re-drill this if your lock doesn't come with that one mine did so there's no need for me to re-drill it but you'd have to find the correct position for it to rest that re-drill and knock your roll pin through if your locks don't come with these cases if they're uh, mark 2 granada escort locks not coming with the complete kit bear in mind as well on the inside of the lock tumbler it has a washer uh, should be laid out here it is this is an isolating washer like a friction washer it goes in there and it helps the lock to not bind metal to metal inside here when this goes in if you didn't have that the metal the lock will grind against the metal of the handle that creates uh, a bit of uh, free movement a bit of lubrication if you will so you need that if you can't if you haven't got one of those or if you're refurbing your Cortina locks because your locks were sticking and you're going to take all these apart and just refurb them and that will crumble away you'll find it if it has crumbled away you, you find all this uh, the remains of it here look it just all breaks up when you take your lock apart but what you can do is you can get plastic I made one I didn't need it in the end because I found an original but you can get this plastic which is off sort of a bleach container or one of those white plastic liquid containers very liquid may do but it's not as flat you want one of those here it is i use a screen wash tub look all right and i cut a section out and then made it exactly the same shape as this one so i took one that i had laid it down drew a stencil around it then i very carefully using a scalpel i cut out and then just fine sanded it and i made one um i haven't used it simply because 
I found an original so that would go through there like this and that's an assembled lock once you put the parts on the back you have a return spring as well they can snap and corrode hard to get hold of I can't help you with that hoping that when you take yours apart these are okay but they lock on here on either side of that pin you, you lock one side there and then under pressure bring that one over the top and lock it on this side I can't really demo it with one hand but it's I'm trying to do it there now that goes across so that one of the spring locks on that side of the tab then bring this use your pick or use some long nose pliers hook it and snap it on that side you'll find then that makes the lock spring back round then um, what I did I used some uh, grease just a little bit of grease in the end of the cap then pop it on the top don't go too much grease or you'll find it entering your key and then every time you're in your car pulling your key out you get covered in grease so you can grease that up that's what's been done with this one it's lightly greased inside and all reassembled very smooth action on, on that so that locks done we're going to do the same with this one all my spare tumblers I've kept and put in a bag there for future use uh, I was lucky as well I found some new old stock uh, wafers I say tumblers wafers you can see it's probably in there somewhere there's some new old stock ones there's different shapes I counted uh, three or four different shapes of uh, wafer which served to create the lock combination I think I discussed this earlier that oblong is just in different positions so at the, at the moment you see the oblong not quite equidistant look at um, where my thumb is there's more brass there and less on the right hand side so the, all they do the, the oblong just changes its position there when the key goes in through that oblong it either pushes or pulls this tumbler wafer inside the tumbler and moves it left and right which makes it stick out like this does watch when I pull the key out you'll see the wafers popping out see one go there too there they go see how the wafers pop out when you do that and then pop back in when the key goes in do it again and when the wafers are all out it isn't possible for the barrel to rotate because the wafers are jammed in these two slots inside the barrel so that's how it works push that in and now get that in the barrel say in the barrel you can get in the barrel with the key out just that it won't rotate so that will now rotate key out and it won't even if I just pull it out a few clicks you'll find I can't now turn it because the last wafer is jamming it push in and away you go so that's how you refurb your locks there's one last little thing you put on the back which is the another Pac-Man I call this one these slides under there after the springs gone on springs goes on then Pac-Man goes on top and then that fin finishes off the or in this case the new one from the Mark II Escort Granada so I would put I would put that on tension it up slide on the little Pac-Man monster and then pop that on top put the roll pin through tap that back through that goes all the way through there that locks then assembled like this one there's a rubber gasket as well goes there that's to stop weather getting in my lock came with a new one they tend to be all right all the ones I've salvaged have been okay here's my bag of salvaged lock parts and we keep them to one side so that's how we did it we did the glove box that's quite easy your glove box just has a little pin another roll pin right there that knocks out and you can slide this out it's only uh, three wafers in this again use the same principle arrange your wafers so that the key goes in and brings them all flush and then that lock comes apart quite easily so your glove box locks pretty you work it out it's quite easy to do so that's that ignition barrel was already I started with the key that came with the ignition barrel that was with it I found another key as well which is almost the same as this key but by one click it'll, it'll open the boot lock if you wobble it a bit uh, it won't open the ignition you can it's well known that forward keys when you wiggle them but the boot lock is greased as well I've been using a waterproof grease uh, an adhesive grease um, a mobile one which is quite good for weather because this lock gets quite a bit of weather on it so boot lock there done 
all the locks are done really there so we, we understand how to do the locks and make them and then any spares don't forget always bag up your spares because you never know when you're going to need them again or someone you might want to help out gets them okay so i'll leave the locks for now take you across to the lighting department you saw us just taking off those discs i'll show you how far we got it soon gets cluttered i'm sorry about that but uh, i'm just working out my best lenses i've stripped down all the lenses now and give them a clean as you saw and i've broken off the glass off some of these here's one with the glass broken off it what i did to break the glass off these brand new units is I put um, masking tape over it then I use the angle grinder over there with safety goggles be very careful now you're into broken glass territory so this is where you can get splinters so I use this uh, oil drum cutting half to catch all the glass it does nothing gets out of it and uh, I put masking tape over the front of the light and then I cut a slit in it with the angle grinder being very careful not to go through or create sparks internally which would damage the silvering all right and then what we did was just tap it and try and what you want to do is try and break the glass into two or three pieces no more than that so uh, once it's upside down i tap it with a hammer and crack it and the line that you've scratched etched in it from the angle grind and usually breaks it in two because what you want to do is lever out large pieces of glass to break off this glue if you break it into small pieces you're forever picking all the little edges of glass out of this and you can end up uh, damaging this it's easy to slip um, and scratch it so be careful and wary of that I can see how that could easily happen I was was going round on here you can see the remnants of it scraping it um, then just shaking the towel into the tub there getting that towel and shaking it back into there then coming across and then with a scalpel it's a craft knife just taking off the rest of the um, glue because these were glued in as opposed to a rubber gasket on the earlier ones that would then give you a reflector that's a high beam reflector because it's not got the side light bulb so that would give you that which is what you need a nice good quality reflector with no corrosion on the back that's what we're heading for there's two here assembled with the glasses just resting into the position they're not glued in what you've got to make sure when you do it is you've got your backing plate as well you, you uh, those backing plates there those bowls they sit in and they're all handed you've got left hand one left hand two right hand one and right hand two in this case we're on left hand two there on the right of your screen and then left hand one on now the left of your screen there they only fit in a certain way into the locating screws on your backing plates for your headlights so these silver bowls here that you can see the normally galvanized these were these came painted i've got some galvanized ones these only fit in the headlight things one for each slot you can't mix and match them they're done so that you can't put your lights in wrong so once you're happy that you've got left hand one left hand two right hand one right hand two you position them in then you get your your bowl your glass headlight bowl side light to the bottom and side light on the outside i'm just going to check that side light is on the outside i think that it is and um you've got to put the bowl till these locating tabs here look see in the middle of your screen again they engage into these cutouts and they're designed so you can't get your light the wrong way and off off uh, axis however you'll know that we've just fitted this glass and that glass could be any position at the moment so we need to set this in and then put this on later completely straight or parallel with the bottom of the headlight backing plate so you want that straight otherwise you can end up gluing that in and when you come to fit this it's, it's skewed so you just mock everything up and then at the very last minute then put you're going to put your silicon on you're looking at a straight line between the fonts of the halogen relative to the bottom of here so we just need to get that uh, system running to get them exactly parallel we want those to be uh, spirit level straight really so that's my job for tomorrow is to do that so they're they're all ready to go you can already see that they look clean and shiny the uh, the, the good backing plate shines through and we've washed the glass as well so they're not smoked on the inside and covered in dust like they go so you've got yourself some clean very clean lights there and believe me they do uh, they do work when we'll show you how to fit the 
that extra power bulbs and get the best out of them. So that's one set, or about a third, halfway through perhaps, probably halfway through that. We've got to do a few more little tricks that we do, like I showed you, with the, the backing uh, pack. make it look completely original at the back and the uh, sticker which we had here's one attached there's two lots of stickers one goes on the actual headlamp itself then the second sticker fits onto the um, the cap the twist and turn cap so we'll be getting a good eight sets uh, eight stickers made uh, for this before they go back together they've got to have those stickers on so that we've got as close to original as we can get the side light bulb itself the design of these i'm very carefully gripping this now because this could just fall apart in my hand so i'm gripping both sides because you can be careful how you do it you'll see the side light rubber grommet there the side light when it sits in here is slightly off to one side i don't going to worry about that too much this lamp won't rotate to get it straight so we'll we'll live with it although I don't think it's that far out. It might actually be an optical illusion that could be actually bang on in the middle. You would think that it would be. These locating tabs are locked, so there's nothing you can do. You can't change them. So wherever that sits is where the halogen has to be at a spirit level line to the car. Okay, but what I was going to say is the uh, side light bulb on these sticks out quite far. I'll take you across, put that on the blanket so we don't scratch the front. There's the side light bulb. That plugs in just there that's assuming you buy the same ones i bought off ebay but it's not going to fit the side light bulb isn't designed this unit's not designed to be going in these old 70s backing plates so it hits the backing plate all right now i don't want to butcher the backing plate they're too good so what we did on swampy you can cut them tabs down off there and solder flat wires on it's quite easy to do and then you can put um, some uh, tesla tape over the top or you can make a cap with some, I used, um, I'm trying to think what I used, I used um, an Araldite based adhesive, an epoxy adhesive, to seal that. Then, if you use LED bulbs, you never have to get to these anyway, but you can get to them even, even if you do seal the wires, it's only the wires that will still pull out of the rubber bung. So, them tabs at the moment would be too long, so you'd be cutting them down and soldering very low profile wires on, and then just sealing it with um, epoxy resin so that it doesn't short circuit on the face of this so that's how we would build it and it all go together and that would slot in you should hear it slot in in a sec when I find the, uh, the tab holes I'm just feeling through we'll get it in a sec I think it's around there no nope. without tilting this up I can't do it but See what I mean? It's precarious when you're filming and you're trying to do... There we go. Okay, so that is the position. It's actually over that way. This one, again, is the same. There's your tabs. This one's straightforward because there's no side light bulb. This one's straightforward and just straight into And you'll see them tabs engage. Look, I'll take you down. And there also in such a way that if I rotated it wrong you don't go in so you can't put the light in the wrong way so that's it but you can see on the on your camera on your screen on in YouTube land hello by the way all your viewers that it looks very clean through there and that helps with the appearance of the car so let's, let's take a, mu a mucky one that's not been done and you can see the difference now look you just don't get that crystal effect see we're smoked out and faded there still operational this one but you lose a lot of light you'd be surprised uh, the performance curve can steeply tail away when you've got just a bit of milkiness on there it's quite a sharp drop in performance uh, for a small amount of uh, deterioration to the to the lens so we it's just not acceptable to run those i mean it's a usable unit but uh, you'll be uh, 
in the night time you won't be uh, as happy as when you've got these running that nice crystal clear and nice silver backing bright already you can see that's what we're trying to get with this light conversion and the name of the game is to get this boxed and done and then we'll place the bulbs into storage and they go back into the storage boxes knowing that we've got a set of completed lights so you saw the technique there that I used to do it it's a bit time consuming and can be messy and also you've got to watch your fingers on the shards of glass just be wet, very wary that you're working with glass you've got to have uh, glasses on eye goggles whatever you want I'll tell you why straight away I felt them hit my face when you when you're leaving off the glass it will fracture and glass will will separate off and uh, you'll get projectiles so watch it because you don't want that in your eyes so it's one of them jobs where if you're watching these videos from the mark free club or you, you've got a mark free you're using the videos as reference we uh, we welcome you to do that but i'm just saying if you're doing your headlight conversion like this do not break that glass off without goggles on because one shard and you're uh, you're in trouble a lot of trouble um, I would dread to think what it must be like to get a shard of glass in, in your eye. Your, your instinct's going to be to blink, and then you're in a lot of trouble. It's bad enough just with um, angle grinder metal. Uh, that's why you've always got to have your, your eye protection on. So uh, bear that in mind. So I'm going to leave you, for me anyway, again, it's uh, for you, it's a few minutes. For me, it's a whole other night. I'm going to leave set situation like that I'd like to have cleaned up before I retire for dinner but I'm out of time so rest assured I'll give this place a good clean up we'll put everything that we don't need back into the boxes and pack it away so locks and lights continue on for 36 okay we're doing well you saw us just cutting out those backing plates these are the plates to secure these cups so that we look original at the back of the units so um, on the uh, the new backing panels, they only come with a rubber grommet. I'll show you what I mean. Just in my right hand, coming across to you, these rubber donuts come with the the new lamps, but we want to make them look cortina, so we go for these cups. So white white silicon there, just a bead underneath, um, some speckled primer on, just to give it a bit of a a rough feel, but to emulate the uh, zinc. So we painted those as well. We didn't get them. The brass, uh, brass underneath with a zinc plate. We just, we've just painted those. So a better silicon on. Once that cures by tomorrow, they'll be, uh, you'll be able to slot on your cap. Now for your high beam units, your single filament units. That's that one and that one. They only need a two prong cup. Let's find a two prong cup. Here's a two pronged cup. Look, see. Just a straight high beam so there's no extra wiring to do to that just two cables and that belongs to there but for the because we're doing a quad high beam conversion when you dip this headlight and switch to high beam this contains not only a dipped filament but a high beam filament and the side light so that would be a total with the ground of four cables which uh, have the three of them here so we're missing the extra high beam wire so when this high beam comes on, normally on your Cortina, this one would dip out from, from um, this would dip out and just your two outers, uh, two inner uh, high beam come on. But we do it where not only do you get your outer high beam, but this becomes a dip beam to a high beam, which means it needs an extra wire. So what I like to do, I'll cannibalize, well, we don't have to cannibalize actually, we just get, find a wiring loom that's got a blade on it make an angle then we'll rivet on an extra terminal here for that high beam bulb connection um, on your uh, high beam bulb you have two pins so one of those cables and we'll put the heat shrink this has got protective heat not heat shrink but uh, not a fiberglass wire but it's a heat resistant shield that goes over the cable stops it uh, getting hot we'll add that as well so an extra terminal needed to be added to this cup clean the cup up get that old sticker off then get the new sticker on clean the cup up and that cup's ready to fit to that unit so two of those to do we're all right for the single high beam units the cups just need cleaning and that's it that sticker's almost salvageable so there we go we're gonna find a blade now a luca lucar blade bend the right angle in it then find a either a rivet or a small nut and bolt 
and bolt that onto the back of this cup clear of this connector so just to the right of the connector probably exactly opposite that one so that would complete that then all what I do is uh, silicon on the lenses these haven't got the lenses on all the glass has been removed so headlight conversion going very well uh, part for part 36 36 will wrap because I reckon I'm approaching an hour soon and then for 37 that's when you're going to see this the trim and some work on the body shell happening uh, we're slowing up in the unit now there's a few little little niggly jobs to do I've got the chrome surround back for the back windows you saw us build those pedal boxes earlier so they're out of the way there's a steering column to do which I might cover in 36 for the steering column rebuild and that would close 36 so for you high octane seekers uh, 37 is going to be the one for you where we see some actual progress on the shell because we've been in here too long we've not seen that Cortina shell for a lot of time we've been on the engine haven't we rightly so that it was uh, that deserved three episodes for the engine we've seen the locks in this video there let's finish uh, that cup connector let's get a Lucar shaped up and bolted on let's do that in the electronic stores we've found a, a male to male Lucar that which will suit what we need so we're going to slice that open with a blade carefully and then get a right angle on it okay looking at this Lucar uh, it looks like you've got high capacity ones slightly thinner so these tabs here obviously carrying current on the bulbs this really wouldn't be as suitable for the high beam current although I haven't got that type of wide connector we're going to need a special connector for that so we've got to investigate stores and see what we've got we might have to we can cannibalize some lamp fittings I think or some wiring looms let's just see what uh, we've got out there it could be that these plugs are wider and we can use them in the loom in the engine bay because we're going to need to but if it drops down to the smaller size internally I'm not going to be as worried it looks like it's just the way the spec is I think we'll be okay because the relay itself has these size so we will go for this okay guys the electronics department is open for business open for trade okay so we're installing high power units these are, are night breaker bulbs I'm going to show you the pack in a minute they've got bigger connectors on than uh, what you'd normally get with your Ford lamps if you look at what we get with the uh, standard lamp we've got small type blue cars we've got to get onto the big type now they're actually the same size pins here as what you get on the outside of the cup bizarrely they go down a size when they get inside the cup we could hack a Cortina loom that has a plug with three pins on it but I don't want to do that I'm going to make some so we've got some uh, spare Lucar connectors here and we're going to cut the cable off inside the cup I've already done this one there and resolder a new lead with the large type connectors on it so that when we put the daybreaker night breaker bulbs in that uh, we can plug straight on we won't have a multi plug so we'll have to make sure we uh, we recognize which pin to put which wire it won't cause any damage if you get it wrong it's just that your lights won't work properly the amount of times you change the bulb it's not a problem you just need to have some documentation somewhere letting you know or just do one lead at a time when you change your bulb and you won't get it wrong so we're going to do that We've got some heat uh, protective cable sleeve in here which we can use and we've got some good quality cable there which we can use as well to uh, to do it. So I'm going to cut to length a piece of wire. I'm going to solder that wire onto there with the larger connector on. So we'll end up with two large style connectors coming out of this plug. Sorry, three large style connectors uh, coming out of this plug. One of them is going to be the additional Lucar pin which we fit uh, to the end of the cap to create the fourth connection which is what we need something like this uh, there was one I've just already made and we're trying to find it. it's on the floor somewhere I'm going to show oh, there it is no it's not somewhere around I've just made a Lucar connector we'll then be drilling a hole through the cap and picking it up on the inside for a solder join there it is so we've got to get that so it's got to get a small hole through there and a nut and bolt on it and that'll be our additional high beam cable now I've just checked my loom and it's included in the loom I just need to fit a female spade in the loom but we've added the extra cable early on in the videos right early on we've already allowed for all of this okay so drill a hole through fit that pin I've got a technique to do it using an, uh, 
electrical block connector, a chock block, where you're going to use the nut and bolt off a chock block. That's going to go through there, straight through the loo car, like through here. We'll have to oversize that hole, and that will then bolt to this block on the inside. So you'll have a electrical connector block on the inside of which we'll solder a piece of cable to. Okay, we're going to get on the soldering irons heating up now, so we're going to solder a piece of cable to this first, then drill the hole through and get that loo car on. Here we go. Okay, we're just uh, tinning up our first cable of the day. And we want to connect that. Now you could just put the little grub screw in there. Uh, there's no need really to solder that to it. We've got a the grub screw for the block connector which can go in if we want or we can solder if we want so this iron that I've got should be capable of soldering this on for a real good connection I'm using a powerful iron for this job I've got to make sure I don't jam the other hole because we will be needing that to screw it to the the casing, but we're going on good there. Going on real nice. Okay, so we're in there, and this is now going to bolt to the inside once it's cooled. That'll take a while, that because there's a lot of mass there. Right, I'll bring you up to the uh, connection. Okay, here's our Luca right angled on. This needs straightening a little bit. That's the grub screw off the block connector, so you'll see how when we go inside the cap, this will now engage with it, and that creates our nice connection inside the cap. Some heat shrink, heat protective sleeve over the wire, and then getting ready for our first Luca there, and that'll give us one of the three large connections which we're going to need to connect uh, to this special bulb. Okay, so my next task is to angle that inside here and get the grub screw to engage with a flat blade screwdriver. We may want to um, also fit the other cable. We're going to need to get the soldering iron in and fix that's one of the originals. So that'll be the dip connection. That normally goes dead when you flick to high beam, but on, on this, on Ruby, that will go dead and then this terminal here will go live. So toggling from high, from dip beam to high beam between those two connections. That's an earth and that's the side light so we can discard those for now. Although having said that, this will need converting to a Lucar connector because the uh, side light bulb on this, actually this isn't used, I, I say it wrong, this isn't used. We don't actually need that connector. I just had a thought actually while I'm doing this. Uh, I think my freeway connector's rigged up. I need to go and check that I haven't already thought this through in that the side light is not contained within this cap on this type of lamp uh, on the original Ford the side lights contained all within the cap I may have altered my wires already on the uh, machine I don't know if I have or not uh, we need to check that if that's the case um, we can use the side light wire for the main beam cable and we won't need a fourth connection I just need to go and check that I could have made a mistake hold on thinking on guys I think I kept them the wiring bay harnesses original so what I'm gonna do this side light connection I'm gonna bring it outside of the unit because your side light bulbs is around this area on the new lamps slightly outside of this casing so we just have to cut a little notch in it extend this cable a little bit so that it's able to plug onto the side light uh, pin which should be here like this you, you're looking at something like that in fact there is no side light pin this has got a hard soldered wire so we've got to put a, um, a cable on this and we'll actually join it inside here so I'll put a male on the end of there and we're going to take the cable from this solder it on the back and then join it inside the cap it'll come out through the cap in a little slot I think that's how I'm going to do it I'll keep the wires nice and neat okay so a slot cutting out of this a little bit which would carry the side light wire which is outside of the cap normally they're inside of the cap so you wouldn't need that so we've got to solder onto there for a side light wire bring it inside and join it inside that's how we'll do that we could make a hard connection actually because this is permanently part of this so what we'll do 
one cable coming out straight into here and that's how we do it or we could even cut this cable and just solder straight onto there if there's enough room I'll, if there's enough room we'll just chop straight at this point pull that right back and cut there and solder straight onto there there may be just enough room when you put the cap on to get the bulb to go in we'll have a look at a bulb housing in a minute problem with that is the silicon still going off so I'll w work with it we're okay let's get the main cable on first let's put that block connector on work with me on the okay we are done here quick skip to the finished article I've got the cap open and we're just checking our H4 this is a H4 bulb so I said I'd show you the bulbs that we're gonna use Osram Nightbreaker these are H4s we also have a pair of uh, the H5s the single pin ones anyway we'll see what they are next but now we're doing the dip and high beam lamp so I'm going to install these bulbs there's bulb already in it which came with the set but we're going to swap out now to this uh, night breaker lamp and then we're going to test it we've got a power supply there ready to test 12 volt power pack ready to go it worked alright just using that side light wire as length as it was and what you do as you're offering the cap up you start to feed the side light bulb into the housing I'd, I'd forgotten that I'd cut out of the uh, metal casing a slot to accommodate it so there's no need to alter this that all goes together there's our pin and there's all the wires inside there nice and neat with our connectors at the back of the bulb yes that should have a uh, a white three pin plug on it strictly speaking okay uh, I could always buy one of them and insert the spades into that plug if I had to but um, it's not gonna it's not gonna short so we're ready to go and test that take this bulb out and install the night breaker bulb and then close the cap up I've got to be careful the silicon's not quite cured I don't want to damage anything here although it is pretty hard now but it uh, needs really a day then we're gonna mock that up so we'll have on the back ground high beam sorry a high beam dip beam and side light connection okay we're gonna run through that now let me put the uh, night breaker in there's a the night breaker bulb open we don't want to touch the filament you don't want grease on those so we wash our hands now we put some gloves on to handle these but we basically don't touch them just in case we'll pop some gloves on and then we'll install these okay bulb installed and then heading off towards and having get you on camera for this installation should be able to let's see if it works so lift up the retaining spring find the position for the bulb because they only go in one way that's the position for the bulb so retaining spring back hoping I can just about catch you on camera here guys gotta just let the retaining spring dodge past the connector round it goes and then just towards the back I'm hooking the spring in the lamps on a piece of cotton toweling careful not to touch the outer metal casing due to the silicon not 100% cured cure. all blocked in taking great care with this now you'll see how this side light adaption works we feed in let it go on its way push home all the way home there rotate the cap now until it finds its home on the tabs holding at the front a little bit tricky inside with the wires I just need to compress down a little bit and we go in like that what I'm going to do is just arrange the wires a little bit better inside so they're not as tight but we can test this out of the housing but you'd see that once that silicon secured the cap will clip on so I've got 12 volts on here now I know that the ground is this pin so I'm just going to hook up I've no crop clips available today so I'm just locking on I'm going to bring the camera up a little bit for you 
and then this one's going to give me high beam which it does there's our high beam coming on now I'll bring that to your screen so you can see high beam uber bright the camera's able to compensate I can't look at that directly the other tag is going to be dip beam which it is so I've got both connections there working and then the other small tabs are side light nice and gentle our side light so that's working as it should so tested all we've got to do is let the silicon cure and place the cap back on so that's what we do for the dipped headlight dip and main beam headlight dual operation headlight the full beam single unit will be a lot easier just two wires so we need to replicate this all over again for the other side so it'll be soldering iron back on and we'll build another one for the other side power supply off for now I'll do the high beam one now let's just see if there's any differences there shouldn't be and then we'll go and build another one of these but that all works you can see that that cut out there fits the bulb and it's not too close on here I've mocked that up as it come out it'll hit the earth first I don't want to make a, a solid protector over this with adhesive because you're going to lock the pin that pin needs a certain amount of spring action because it's a bayonet fitting so there needs to be movement in that little pin so we're not we're just going to put a little bit of test tape over the top to high quality cloth tape but even if it does dislodge it it tends to not hit the uh, the dish the outer ridge of the bulb goes first but just in case so that's it that's it for that light guys I had a battle with OCD and guess who won I decided I found a plug I thought I'll put the plug on it it's using those three individual spades so a bit better I think you'll agree uh, plug for the bulb I just thought I might be struggling behind the back of the headlights one day they were changing the bulb so just plug straight on that's how we should have done it same wiring you'll see that block connector inside there which picks up that little nice tag at the back screwed through that gives you extra high beam so we're done we're going to box that up now and we're going to glue the lens on the front build another one do the single beam as well as I said okay so just a quick uh, snap back I had to do that the multi plug on found one in the, in the spares a bit better Okay, so that's the unit all assembled with the rubber cover as well on. That just nicely seals the, the face, the, that rubber cover, extra weatherproofing. So you see that extra tag at the end. We put some power to that, we'll get some light on there now. So we're nearly built with this. Just wanted to make it goes a lot together a lot better with that uh, little three pin connector. So I'm happier with that set up there, that lovely light. So we're just OCDing on these lights and getting them right. We're gonna, just want to get it right looking looking as stock and factory as we can there just looks just looks a lot better than uh, putting in them lights out of the box the uh, the ring ones over there just makes it that extra touch and it'll always revert back to original if you wanted to because I've not changed the wiring pins just added an extra terminal okay I'm going to double test it now bit of power on let's see what happens Okay, I'm on the, the deck there with a 12 volt feed ready to go, power on. So I've got my earth already connected, so I'm going for, this is the dip beam. So that's dip beam. And then this will be side light. And then the extra tab I put on is that extra high beam that you get. And there it goes. See the camera, uh, auto iris delay, you'll get a flash before the camera can register it so you get that so that's the way it works we're good to go on that lovely unit let's, let's make some more of those there you have it halogen on nice silver back into it looking stock and factory around the side there move along please okay for the single halogen we've only got to make one alteration that's the earth wire on these uh, caps as a small blade we just need to put the standard blade loop car on there got plenty of spares of those so we crimp on and we take it to the soldering iron do that live for you now look at that block of wood there really handy whoa yeah i saw the camera took a head but woo one little mini tripod camera took a head but 
nice big block of wood when you've got a high power iron just to keep you running and it keeps uh, you from burning things so well, the wood smolders a little bit a bit of oak smoked and um, so I've got that blade on there all I'm gonna do I can see we can just I've stripped back the wire I'm just gonna scrimp on these are the old original type plugs Lucas spades whatever you want to call them and uh, the wood's great because you can press down it's quite a good insulator and then I like to feed in I'm just off your screen hold on while we come across apologies there I wasn't watching that so I'm just heating up now on this Luca in I go oak smoked the best flavor and there we have it we're good to go so that goes across to the I'll take you across on the camera tripod slowly so it doesn't get rough footage at home here's our base ready to have its glass on this is the single bulb unit and that won't touch it just yet goes onto the earthing tab forward a little bit for you onto the earthing tab tilting in the other put, uh, spade on here is okay it's already the right size uh, for it so the lamp is fitted like that and that's your, your night breaker single bulb we flip out we flip out two little quick release springs on the original unit find the orientation there's a little locating dimple I can see it there I think it's this way no it's not careful not to touch the lamp in there we go lock on and that's really all there is to it on this one we're now locked in all I've got to do now that should have cooled off yeah it has find my earthing tag on the housing and I slip onto the earthing tag I'm now on the earthing tag just there on your screen and that leaves me free to clip on the cover like this that would now twist and turn and you'd have the second uh, unit there and you can see how the uh, parabolic reflector works look at that blue circle in the middle of your screen that's actually the color of the lamp the nightbreaker colored lamp you can see how the correct uh, dish effect gathers the light up and that's just the way that these reflectors are that's why it's important to have good reflectors um, because you just lose so much light if, you, if your glass has gone milky so that one's really ready there wasn't much to do on that one so now we'll, we do the other dipped one and then finally the other single one of these and that would complete the mission I might just show you a few quick clips of me doing the uh, the dipped one the dip and high beam one but we've covered that on the first one so no need to uh, clock up the time on that but suffice to say this is what we're heading for these stickers need remaking we'll get on to a sticker company this evening online and get that done so continuing on for you for nice headlamp rebuilds I think you'll agree they're looking good okay continuing on with the quad headlight rebuild some nice stickers found uh, resalvaged ones there that I found cleaned up and some new back in adhesive on makers some good stickers save us uh, a job they're actually covered up but we like we like to know they're there so they're all on cleaned up the connectors the spade connectors here with some very light acid and a, a stiff brush you can use a toothbrush or I use the seam sealing brush to, just to clean them copper contacts you'll see how the, the rivet now is enhanced some uh, grease on there some special uh, contact grease waterproof uh, grease going on just to and also wash down the acid so it doesn't carry on eating away so that was just clean the copper up we've um, silicon greased these donuts which fit over the top they go over the top there ready so we're just waiting for the housing to put together I found some new old stuff.
stock backing plates in galve I've just cleaned some up there now what I do with them I'm just lacquering those so that the galve doesn't uh, tarnish waiting for that to go and then uh, we can build up the completed units got some crop clips for testing just over here so we can test up okay so uh, nearly finished with the quad headlamp build very tidy just look at that nice and the glasses are fitted let me just wipe my hands hold on I've got silicon grease on there try and grip the lens from the edge you'll see the lens is adhered fitted now and sealed round the edge there with a the white silicone sealing inside and then a little bead round the edge just for double measure you can't see that when they chrome rings on so we're done there okay let's go and get those backing plates they should be cured okay final assembly of a unit just going to talk you through it in case you're looking for any backing plates for your cortina or you're making some or you've got some and you want to see how they fit together left hand one and left hand two see that little stamp there this is the right hand unit so right hand uh, unit these are the backing balls we're taking these ones off these ones have been painted silver not a bad job but I've got uh, some galvanized ones going on just to get a bit of an extra original look nothing wrong with those nice balls a good paint job was done on, on those uh, they came with the lights those so there's our back in plate what it consist of well you've got some uh, spring uh, retaining posts there and these are the headlamp and headlamp adjusters themselves you can get them from Lucas directly still make them MG Club for that eBay so you can still get those if they're missing that includes the little insert there plastic insert for the screw to go in you turn that and it it'll pan and tilt the headlamp to get your direction this backing plate's got some dust on it so first we'll dust this down once I've dusted it down, I'll take you through assembling the units after those completed lights that we made. Hold on for a quick dust down now. Okay, so cleaned up and now our backing bowls. Finished in zinc. I've lacquered these just to stop the zinc from corroding. It has a terrible tendency to corrode. Backing plates themselves are also stamped RH1 and RH2. So that you don't get the bulbs in the wrong places. They've got locating slots in them for the bulbs. And the back of the bulbs have little tangs there which fit into the grooves there and off you go so we just have to fit the right one for the right side and uh, we're going to just establish now which one right hand one fits in it's obviously one or two slots i'll just get the lamp now we know the side light unit goes on the inside i always thought it was on the outside but uh, the way that this is set up with these bowls the uh, side lights can unit can only fit on the inside so, I will now get a side lamp unit, and away we go to fit it. Okay, so right hand two is the inner one. Two refers to the inner inboard, one's the outer. So that gives us our side light and dip unit that we talked about and we built. Face this down now. I've actually put the bulb in. You don't need to do that until you've clipped it. But Now we've got a little spring just coming up there. Spring here that locks the bowl in place so you hook on to that locating tab then I then get the, the super handy long nose makes their uh, life so much better when you've got these long nose players and if you can do it with a camcorder in your hand you're doing good so we take that up that now I can't quite get the leverage but we're going to spring that up lock that onto that post that secures the bowl in place there we are from the back with that spring attached and that's pulling the bowl in you can see that gal finish there looks better than the silver on the back so that locks that nice and securely on those two posts you'll see that my one's not located there so I, I can still do it with the spring on and just grab the bowl and spring it back lock it into this locating screw the adjuster screw see how that's missed it we pull back now and just lock it into there and then when you've done that you can adjust the pan and tilt with those adjusting knobs there and that's how you set your lights up so we can see that we're nearly ready to go there okay with that headlight slotted into those adjusters like that we're now ready we've put the bulb in you can see how the bulb only sits in one way and if you look closely you'll see an arrow on the top of the glass and that's designed to point to the very top 
of that screw so that's how I was able to when I was silicon in the glasses you rotate the glasses till the arrows uh, to the top of the screw so then you parallel you do that uh, with everything in place when you're silicon and on so that gave me uh, the location then lastly you've got this chrome ring some screws now fit into the uh, backing bowl we need to fit those because these are new old stock backing bowls screws will be just over here on the old plates coming across we'll pinch them out put them in there then the chrome retaining ring goes on and then that uh, side's done okay everything's on the chrome surround trim rings on although i've just spotted something they've got a little uh, weld there where they're joined and i've put them in different positions that's going to do me editing they're all going to have to be in the same place oh dear oh there's always something little uh, join ring there look i've got them all in different places that obviously they'll spin at three different positions so i'll just realign those trim rings up and that is it we're done i think you'll find they're a nice unit look at that what a honey you know in our honey all done just need these cups on the back now look we don't want to face that down we'll scratch the lenses but these rubber cups to go on the back and it'll look like this one there we are that's what it should look like from the back all finished ready for the connectors to go on for the electrics one completed or one pair of completed GXL reproduction or, or, or restored quad headlights so we can put them into the storage box now we're done we'll give them a quick test show me on test then we're moving on to the next job that's the lights out of the way finish ready until we get the car back well you can't look at them direct now you'll see the uh, the one on the inside there it's just the adjustment you just set the pan and tilt but it's slightly uh, off set at the moment but both on both bright too bright for me to look at your uh, added feature of also iris on the camera you're able to see them on screen in youtube land but we have two crisp nice white lamps i'll test the second set i'm sure they'll be okay so we're running good i've tested the dip and the side light so we're operational we can put them into stores job done in and box so we pack away and uh, that's done ready Close the lid, we're off, we're good to go. Okay, so with the headlights out of the way and the locks out of the way, we're ready to start on the steering column. We're going to bring down all the steering column parts now. We've had a lot, uh, the outer columns powder coated, and a lot of the parts powder coated from the steering column. Quick tidy up of the workshop, but I'm going to go and start the editor part of 36, and if it's up to an hour, we're going to say thanks for watching again and look out for 37, where you'll see the body shop, the steering column build and then just a finalisation of all the rest of the parts we've got a petrol tank done we'll show you that in the next video uh, but for now from the workshop if this is an hour then uh, we're signing out don't forget to subscribe all the best thanks for your comments so far and look out for 37 which is going to be higher octane it's going to be better it's going to be good but we've got to have this stuff in we need to cover all the uh, the parts that are involved in making the car but we're uh, we're doing really good and when that shell gets back we can start fitting all the goodies can't we you can just hold on there till august when part 37 rolls into town we've got a couple of small little trim triangles to do there the part of the back doors they need redoing they need replating here's our steering shaft here we're going to line it up with another steering shaft we're going to start working out how the steering column goes back together we've got a slight mod on the steering column because we're having a twin stalk used for cruise control so we'll talk you through how we did that uh, it's going to be probably in 37 i'm going to imagine i'm up to an hour what i do now i start loading all the footage into the editing program and uh, when i see that bar go up past an hour i start to wind it in sometimes i haven't any footage finalizing the end of a film simply because i wouldn't know it's about to run out when i've been filming so if that's the case thanks for the subscriptions thanks for the comments i've not been able to do any comments on july but i'll catch up I've been away a lot and it does take a while to reply to everybody but i will get on there's about 50 replies to do okay so over and out for 37 36 see you in 37 guys thanks a lot for watching from cortina city we'll see you in 37 all the best good night oh just one quick one before i go 
forgot to mention that uh, we did get the power steering done. I don't think I covered that. We were just messing with it earlier on in the beginning of this film. And there was a little locking bar missing uh, inside here. It was uh, like a locating bar. It actually broke. So um, I think what I did, I bolted this together with the bar not quite in line. Anyway, we managed to repair it using another bar. found another bar. So that worked. It was locking it up. But we got it's nice and easy. I can when it's the engine's running, I can just spin that with my hand freely, and we get lock to lock. And there's loads of power in it as it should be. We've put the uh, clear silicon breather tube. This allows the trackwood end bellows to uh, let air between the two as one's deflating and the other one's inflating, and the pressure's transferred through that tube. We've made some nice new stainless inserts for it, and a nice clean piece of tube to do that. Uh, these pipes are just test pipes that are on at the moment going down to the pump but it runs as it should doesn't get hot runs nice so power steering was okay before we closed 36 just letting you know so we're all done on the on the chassis nothing to do on the engine a couple of little clips and trims a couple of ht clips to put back on it we've got a fan shroud as well which we've got we've restored that nice we've got a linkage bar on for the gearbox a selector bar done in galve looking nice uh, we've got the breather pipe back on. I'll take you around just before we close. Um, we fitted the breather. Oh, I just mocked it up actually. I say fitted the breather. We're short of a piece of tube for here, but I had that tested. There's that locking bar, the select sorry, lock selector bar, just there, uh, looking nice to connect to the T shift. So over and out again. Sorry about that. 36 closing. Good night. Got a serious right to turn here. <laughs> Jim, you're going to have to do this, mate. Okay, mate, Mark Free Cortina just over. Oh, yeah, it's it. Cortina over there. Over the road, yeah. I'm going over the road. Easy. <laughs> 